What is up, everybody? And welcome back to Italian Football TV. What a weekend of controversy we have at our disposal. <sighs> bad controversy. Bad controversy. Bad, bad. Man, VAR took a big L this weekend. And all the Serie A, the only thing we heard from our friends who follow IFTV on social media is, what the hell is happening in the Serie A? We're going to try to break it down in our recap. You know, if you're subscribed to our channel, this is what we do every weekend. And Mike, let's talk about what happened in Kielbo versus Juve, where Juve did win 2-0, but they beat a nine-man Kielbo Verona. Cacciatore stole the show when uh, Kielbo Verona were down to, to 10 men. He went down with an injury. The medical team did come on the field. They didn't treat him. So the referee, accord, like according to the rules, said, go outside for the corner kick, for Juve's corner kick. Yeah. He got pissed off. He's like, no, let me go on. He didn't get treatment. When when the doctors come on the field, you have to step off. And then he, he put up the Mourinho handcuff. The handcuff gesture. Gesture, I, yeah. But what he did, that was, I mean, that's like, that's some... Um, I don't even know what to say. Disrespectful to the league, just in general. Him being an old school Italian, supposed to have some experience doing stuff like that, making it look like it's match fixing. A reaction. That's really what he was trying to do. Like he was I, just annoyed. I, he was I understand just annoyed. his frustration, and because you know Campbell's down to ten men, and you're like, wow, you're gonna make us down, go down to nine men for a corner kick when Juve was already winning the match. So I understand why the referee could have let him stay on for the corner kick, but the referee was following the rules, and I think Cacciatore just stupidly let his emotions get to him in a time where everything seemed like it was going against them. And rightfully so, he did get a red card because you can't do that kind of stuff. Another game, I'm going to repeat what Del Piero said about this match. Juve, with little effort, once again, get the win. And that's how it seems like it's going with Juve. Juve's doing what they do best. They're take, picking up these wins, but they, they're so boring to watch. They, <laughs> they are so... I feel bad for the people, the fans that pay to go on the... To the stadium because that I almost fell asleep. Then the only thing that was good is the controversy that happened. The only thing and, that kept me awake and the letters that the little kids gave to Buffon right. and left on his seat. That's right. Um, they were beautiful. They don't want Buffon to leave. Who is? It is his 40th birthday, and no one wants Buffon to leave. But talking about another game where Inter tie a late draw from Spal, no other than Spal. And Inter have go through one of their worst forms since 2012. Another game not won by Spalletti's men. I don't know what the problem with Inter are. I don't know if it's that they're forgetting how to play or it's a mental problem. I'm stuck between the two because it looks like it's a bit of both. They can't score. The goal came through an own goal. Icardi is not scoring either and everyone is criticizing him. They still seem to not have that service and nothing is clicking like it did before. In the beginning of the season, we kept saying they're not playing great, but they're getting the wins. Mm -hmm. Now they're struggling to win. It's like seven games winless right now. Spalletti were praising him so much and now he's at this raw and I feel like he doesn't know what to do. Give credit to yeah. Spal, playing at home in front of their And after home team. conceding an own goal too. Exactly. It's very tough for Inter. It's a, it's a tough moment. They need to keep pushing. But give them credit because they did so well in, in the season that even though they're going through such a bad period, they're still at a point where they're doing very well. They Sorry. did drop to fourth place. Uh, Lazio hopped over them. Considering they still don't have a win in 2018, exactly. it shows how well they did in the beginning. 2018 is not going well for Inter and Roma. They, they struggling from a similar problem. It seems like for me, this Roma looks super stressed with the whole Jekyll controversy. We know Jekyll, he might be leaving, he might not be leaving. The team is not performing well. Florenzi did not even convert from the spot. They lost 1-0 <laughs> yeah. to Sampdoria. They lost to Sam and they played Sampdoria two days ago, actually. And Sampdoria was actually in the lead, but Jekyll actually scored like a last-minute goal there. But they did not salvage anything man, this time. Man, Sampdoria Roma. were just too good. And Guagliarella, the top money. goal scorer yeah. of Sampdoria was not and even Prayet. playing. Prayet's been out. He's going to be out for like two months. And Roma, they I'm telling you, they look stressed out. That's the best way that I would, I would say. And their defense is very shaky, very too. Sh Ali Sun is he's, still the savior. He's still a beast. Without him, still they would have lost this match by more goals. That's true. But it's it's a very, very strange situation. The whole club doesn't know what's going on. Because Jekyll, the latest is that Roma and Chelsea have agreed on a deal. But Jekyll's not going yet because he, does, he wants a higher salary. He wants more years. Chelsea are supposed to decide by today. What, if they're going to accept or not. But for Roma, very tough. The only positive for them has been Alisson. And Sheik was still out in this match 
for another injury. De Rossi, their captain, wasn't there. But talking about a team who knows how to get the job done, and it did come with controversy, but first of all, Napoli came back after being down against Bologna, a team that can never get a win, right? Because yeah. Bologna's, I feel like they're always up, but then they always seem to slip. Napoli, three goals. Dries Mertens is back. Michael, he got a brace, that's right, but yes, yeah, still more controversy. I feel like every Serie A game there was something to yeah. talk about. Callejon was pulled. <laughs> pulled it it was down. like a touch. It was like he, he like graced his shoulder and Callejon <laughs> fell down. I think that was way too soft. Donadoni got mad after the game too. Rightfully so. He asked the referee if they could check VAR and he was like, no, I don't want to check VAR. It's going to waste time. And he was like, I feel like I'm on a different planet. And yeah. I feel for Donadoni. Donadoni should have went crazy. He should have threw, threw chairs and I would have never blamed him. Because the whole point of uh, VAR, it was introduced to the league to make sure there's no mistakes. And now you're telling me the ref doesn't want to stop the game for 30 seconds just to make sure the call was right or let not? Me, let me explain something. From what I've heard and doing a little bit of research, they didn't check VAR on this because, number one, the referee felt like he had clear vision yeah, of the yeah. play. And VAR will not be used if the referee believes he was in the right mm -hmm. on the decision. And also because... The, the ball wasn't at play in this one. And they say, if the ball is not at play, VAR is not to be used because it's not like in the box where he moved the ball. Did he touch the ball or did he not touch the ball? He had a clear view of him pulling him down and the referee didn't want to go to VAR because of that, because he's not supposed to, according to the rules. This weekend was the most disastrous weekend for VAR in the history of the utilization of this, we knew it was going to come. When you have VAR, it's supposed to be precise, right? And the referees are still making mistakes. And it's not VAR's fault. What The, the thing that needs to be fixed is the utilization of VAR. Mm. There needs to be a guy who sits on the side in a nice chair like these IKEA chairs and looks and nothing else changes. The referee doesn't have to go over. He keeps playing and you keep getting this, the calls from the referee. And this guy, after the play is done, the Kyle could do his celebration, whatever. This guy checks every single play that's controversial. In the box, penalty, handball, pull down, whatever. He checks and if there's a problem, then you replay the play. Don't blow the whistle, no. let it keep going on. That's how it needs to work because right now it's not working. There was also a call on Koulibaly in the box where Donadoni felt like it did hit Koulibaly's hand. This one to me is not a penalty kick. Hits his um, it leg, looks like it looks hits like his arm, his thigh, and he's super know. close. It's not like all the penalties that he's got, he's got his arm all the way over here. Koulibaly's is close. Calajons was weak, another one like that. And then we have more controversy. And this is annoying to say to the Milan game with Kutrone. I mean, Kutrone hits the ball in with his freaking it was, arm. It was like his elbow. With I, his arm. I don't think that was shoulder. A lot of people were saying shoulder. Nah, he's it, a liar. He it, says shoulder. It was it a shoulder. Did, it didn't even hit his head. It looked like he hit it with the motion. I got to say, in real time, I don't think yes. any, anyone picked it up yes. that it was a handball. Not one Lazio player said that. Yeah, no, no, no one, one picked that up. But afterwards, uh, who was it? Uh, who went up to Inzaghi? The coach, Lazio's coach Inzaghi went up to him and talked to him. He pointed at his hand. I think Kutrono was like, no, it was my shoulder. That was bullshit. Listen. This one, it's not VAR's fault. It's just the referee didn't see it. The Lazio players didn't see it. The Milan players didn't see it. The only person who knew was Kutrone. But I don't know. Do you think Kutrone knew, though? 100%. What do you mean? Does he know? Does he know something hits your... If, if I hit your elbow, okay. you think so you don't know? You gotta know? understand. You have your eyes closed and you just... Eyes maybe closed. you think you grazed Dude, he's it. Dude, he knew exactly what he's doing. I hope, I hope I don't he like, didn't. I, don't I hope like, he didn't. Just, he just doesn't not care. Thing. I don't think he cares at all. I don't, I don't like that mentality. But on the other hand, and I don't, I wouldn't even blame the referee for this one. I just think there should be somebody on the sideline who looks at every play. And they, they say for this one, actually, there was a silent check. But get this, the replay where you could actually see it, not the first replay, which we saw on TV where no one even knew that it was a foul. They say the replay where you saw his elbow did not go to VAR because that camera angle didn't go to the system. Mm -hmm. So... There's a big, big problem with VAR right now. Maybe we introduce it too soon. Maybe we need to understand that there are going to be even more growing problems, growing pains with it. But anyway, on to the Milan match, because we got to talk about the match a little bit. Because Milan actually played pretty good. Uh, Milan played better than Lazio, and they, they came out with a better attitude than Lazio came out. I was very positive. happy with I, how I'm Milan I'm happy with played. Gattuso, but then again, you got to see Lazio did not have Ciro Immobile. Come the Capo Cannoniere of the league, that, that would have made a huge difference, I think. It would have made a difference, but it doesn't take away from what how, the way Milan's team came out. That's true. They, look, they were positive. They are a unit. Yeah, they, they defended well. extremely well, even when Lazio was pushing at the end. I felt like Lazio didn't do anything positive going forward. Milan kept stopping them in defense. Romagnoli was a beast, and things were connecting for them. Bonaventura back on the score sheet. Kessia dominating in the midfield. 
Andre Silva putting in work. Maybe he's not scoring goals, but he's putting in work. Cutrone getting into the space. Things are good for Gattuso right now, but from Lazio's perspective, they have the opportunity in the Coppa Italia this coming week to get back on. I'm not sure if Immobile is going to play, if he's back from They're injury. They're saying it's, it's going to be a 50-50, but Lazio, this is their first loss in like eight games. And yes. It shows how good Lazio have been playing. Uh, and how good Milan. The past few months, yes. I was scared that Gattuso was going to be playing that good, but he's, he's yeah, like you said, he's slowly proven us wrong, and I hope he continues at least till the end of the season. Yes, another problem with VAR. We're going all the way. Crotone against Cagliari. 1-1. And then in the 90th minute, Crotone had a free kick. In the 90th minute, Mike, I'm going to say it yeah, again. I know. Crossed into the box. Ceccherini scored it, put it away. Counts as a goal for, as for the linesman and the referee. VAR is called in to go check this. They look at VAR and they call it offsides. Wrongfully. It was nowhere near offsides. They should have got the winner there. They should have got this the This is the referee's points. fault. And, you can't blame VAR. And the thing is, they're hovering right of, around relegation zone, so literally every point counts. Exactly. Around. So that's, they, that's gonna suck. If a it win, doesn't... a win was stolen by the referee on in this match. Mm. It was stolen. How after looking at the replay, you can you could get this wrong. Any Crotone fan, you would definitely rightfully be pissed off. Zenga was pissed off. Another match, no VAR controversy, but. What the hell is going on with Fiorentina? They lost 4-1 to 19th place Jeez. Elves Verona. Verona Mike. scoring four goals. Moise Keane with a brace. What's going Mike. on over there? The Fiorentina fans, after the match, outside the Artemio Franchi, protesting, setting off fires, protesting against Delle Valle, who is the club's owner. Michael and I have a sort of connection with Fiorentina. We've heard a lot of things about their owner mm -hmm. and the fans being mad because he doesn't want to take them to become a top club and it seems like a lot of the fans are frustrated, and rightfully so. Losing 4-1 to Elis Verona, who struggles to score, who struggles to defend, is simply unacceptable. And every Fiorentina fan should be very, very upset. And Fiorentina, the past five games, they are winless. That's, that's yeah. horrible for a team that should be competing uh, for at least a Europa League. Last thing that we got to say, 40th birthday to Gianluigi Buffon. The goal to the legend legends. himself. The man who I can't believe... How many years he's been doing this at the top level? Four years old, still playing. Is he gonna play another season? That we gotta see. I hope so. Mike Gattuso on Italian TV. Oh my God, this guy's hilarious. Back, back story. <laughs> Buffon's girlfriend works for Sky Italia, which is a little bit weird already. They were doing an interview with Gattuso, and Gattuso like stops midway in the interview, like to stop like what's going on about the Milan game, and he's like, "Oh, by the way, like give give Buffon a kiss for me, but make sure you use tongue." Oh my god. He's got no, he's got no, there's no limits on what Gattuso can say on His TV. His poor girlfriend was blushing and stuff, yeah, a little she... embarrassed, but Gattuso didn't even smirk. He said it straight. Crazy weekend. Definitely in the history books for VAR. The World Cup, who looks, who wants to implement VAR, is going to have to take a lot of different perspectives on what they do. A lot in Italy calling for VAR to get abolished, to, to get rid of it. I don't think it needs to get rid of, it just but needs to be worked I understand on. the frustration from a lot of coaches who these small details count. You have this VAR. Everything should be precise. If they work on that from next season, it's going to be a lot better than it is this season. Yeah, guys, let us know down below. Everyone is going to have a different opinion. Oh, there crazy. are so many controversial moments. We're going to get cursed down in the comments. Yeah. But guys, let us know your take on everything we had to say. As always, thank you for watching. Follow IFTV across social media. We're going hard on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat. Snapchat's a really cool place to follow us. So get following us there. And as always, thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you soon. Ciao, Ciao guys. Ragazzi.